I played 75 brand new cozy games in 2023. And in today's video, I'm ranking them from worst to best. <laughs> And welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Peyton. It is nice to meet you. It is nice to see you. And welcome to the corner. It's that time, everybody. The end of the year where I sit down and I rank every game I played in the year we just finished. In 2023, I played a lot of cozy games. But in today's video, I am going to just be ranking the new cozy games of the year. Today's list will include games that are brand new for 2023 or they're brand new to console in 2023. This list will include early access games, but it will not include games that had alpha testing or demos. Anything that was available for you to purchase and play was included in today's list. Now, a lot of the games throughout this year have very kindly been gifted to me. There are so many of them and I really appreciate every game that was gifted. So for full transparency, I'll let you know in the description which games were gifted, but you'll be able to see from the list that just because I was gifted a game, it does not change how I felt about it. And for today's list, we're going to be using a tier list style. So we're gonna be ranking it like this. Our D tier games are the games that I didn't really like that much. Our C tier games are the games that I thought were just okay. I didn't really love them, but I didn't think they were that, that bad. Our B tier games are games that I thought were good, but they didn't really stand out compared to some of the others. A tier games are games I thought were really great and I enjoyed them. And our S tier games are my games of the year, my personal top favorites throughout a crazy year of cozy gaming. Now, before we get into it, please be sure to click the lovely little like button as well as subscribe for more cozy, chaotic content. And if you're interested to see, halfway through the year, I did a ranking of ranking all of the games I played so far. I did not look at that ranking when I did this one. So if you're interested in checking out my previous halfway through the year ranking, be sure to check that video out to see how my opinions have changed, as well as be sure to check out my review playlist because I'm going through 75 games, so I won't be able to give you the most in-depth reviews about each game, but I have covered the majority of the games on today's list elsewhere on my channel, and they are there for you to discover. Okay, I will shut up because we need to get into ranking these games. I don't even know where to start. I am so nervous looking at this. I think looking at this and I, of course, like I thought about this a little bit, right? I definitely know seeing all of these 75 cozy games, I definitely looking at them know, yeah, okay, these ones were my favorites. These ones were not my favorites. I think what's gonna be tough is doing the middle. So I feel like we should start out with something that is right in the middle. So let's start out with Fashion Dreamer. Fashion Dreamer is a cozy fashion game that pretty much allows you to make outfits, not just for yourself, but for different NPCs. And it has a big focus on social media and gaining likes for your outfits, and therefore you gain more and new exciting clothing items. Now, this game, I thought was either gonna be the best game of the year or the worst, but it really does kind of land a smack in the middle for me. I'm gonna put it in B tier because I do think the fashion is really fun. There are a lot of options. The gameplay loop is definitely something that you get stuck in. Like you can continue playing this game for a long time, but there is no story. There is no diversity with the characters. The characters are kind of just lifeless. So it's, it's in the middle for me. We like the aesthetics, but I definitely wanted some more from it. Next, let's do the very first cozy game I played this year. Many of you have been telling me I've been pronouncing the name of this game incorrectly. I've been calling it Blanc, but many comments have let me know it's actually Blonde. Regardless, it is a short narrative game that follows a young fawn and a wolf cub who have been separated from their families working together with another player or playing by yourself, controlling both characters. You need to use each character's special skill to navigate the wintry terrain, as well as some tricky puzzles. Now, this is one that I remember ranking at the halfway point in the year. I remember putting it in S tier at the time. 
I genuinely really loved this game. It was a beautiful adventure to take, but I think my experience playing the game was so much centered around the person I played it with. I made a video playing this game with my good YouTube friend, Sarah Sunstone, and I think the S tier ranking was more about the experience I had playing with her rather than looking at the game content itself. I think when I look at the game by itself, I think it's still a really great game, but I don't want to throw everything in S tier this time. So I am going to put Blanc or Blonde in A tier because I don't think it has any replayability. It's kind of short. And I do think it is better suited for multiplayer experience as I don't think I would have enjoyed it quite as much if I was playing it by myself. Let's do something I didn't love. Um, <laughs> let's go for Paws of Coal. Pause of Coal is a narrative detective game where you are trying to solve why a bunch of rodents, I think it's bunnies in particular, have caught in this illness and why they're all getting really sick. And using context clues that you're given from other characters, you need to form a hypothesis to figure out why every bunny is getting sick. I loved the idea of this game. I thought the like little Disney-esque rodents were very cute. I was I was excited to go on a mystery, but this one just took like a weird like medical turn that I wasn't into. I found the reading to just be monotonous. I felt like it was a lot of like large medical terminology that took me out of it. And I just, I didn't really like it. So it's gonna be a D tier. I unintentionally have started doing one game per tier so far. So I wonder if we could keep that up. Let's find something that's a C tier game. Let's go for Inhabit. Inhabit is a short puzzle centric game that revolves around the importance of mental health. Your character has been in a mental rut for a long time, but today is the day you finally decide you wanna do something about it. So there are different chores that need to be done around your house that have been neglected for a while, and they come alive via personified character, and you need to solve some different puzzles to do the chore. Now, I really like the concept of this game. I love the importance of mental health, and I love the cutesy character portraits, but the overall design of this game was very simple. It was very quick, and for a game about mental health, the puzzles were exceedingly difficult and not able to offer you a hint system. So I don't think it's the worst. It's definitely not a D tier, but I think it's gonna just be an okay game for me. I feel like we have to get an S tier to get the perfect satisfying lineup now. So I do know off the top of my head, there are a couple games that are going to be S tier, but some of them I gotta like save because they're gonna be spicy. I've talked about this game so much. It has definitely been one of my favorites. I feel like it deserves way more love and hype. And that game, is Moonstone Island. Moonstone Island is a farming sim game with so much more. Pretty much you're an alchemist in training who has just moved to these floating islands in the sky. And it's your job to not only bring up the farm, but to collect these different spirits, which are pretty much like these little monster babies that you could use for battle. It combines cutesy and coziness with card-based battling. That's actually pretty easy to understand if you're newer to these kind of games. It gives you romance options, really fun characters, and they've been doing consistent updates on this game, even though it literally just came out a few months ago, and it has been such an enjoyable time. So it is going to be my first S tier game of the list. It's a game that I find so easy to pick up and put down leisurely if I can only play for a few minutes, but it's also a game that I can spend an entire day on if I please. Okay, now we're just going all over the place. We're going off the rails. Speaking off the rails, let's do Hamster on Rails. This is a puzzle game that's focused on hamsters. It's your job to build a rail system to get the hamster from one side of the map to the other. And along the way, sometimes there are other hamsters that need your help and you'll assist them. Overall, it's a simple looking puzzle mechanic, but I found it to be difficult enough that it kept me engaged. They expanded on different mechanics, so not every puzzle was the same. I found the aesthetic to be cute. You could decorate the hamsters as well. It's a game I didn't hear that many people talk about this year, but I genuinely enjoyed it. So I'm going to give it... Ooh, I'm stuck between A and B. I'm give it a B. I think it's, I'm gonna give it a B. It's a B, but I liked it. It was good. Moving on, sticking with the puzzle games for a moment, 
Let's talk about this game, Stick to the Plan. Stick to the Plan is a game where you play as Roberto the dog who loves really long sticks. And it's your job to navigate from one side of the map to the other, twisting and turning to make sure that your lovable stick can come with you. But along the way, you're also going on a narrative adventure that follows Roberto through parks, to being kidnapped by the dog pound, to escaping the dog pound, to a landfill, and more. It's a puzzle game with story, it has a lot of heart, and it's actually quite challenging, but it's one of those challenging games that you kind of can't put down. For me, it's an A-tier game. I really have been enjoying my time playing this one. I think it is so funny. They actually give you achievements if you hit things with your stick too many times, and it's safe to say I've definitely gotten a lot of achievements for failing in this one. Next, I think I want to do this game, which is called Flutter Away. Flutter Away is a short game where you are a photographer who needs to capture some different things in nature. Specifically, you're looking for different flowers, different insects, and also even a capybara or two. I found this game to be really cute and satisfying, but it was a bit short and I feel like there wasn't a whole heck of a lot to explore. I enjoyed my time playing it, but I find that this was more of like an idle cozy game. Like it's, it's definitely doesn't have a lot going on. And I like my cozy games to be chill, but have a lot in them to do. So because of that, I am gonna put Flutter away in C tier. Next, let's get some of our farming sim games up in here. There are a lot of farming sim games, so let's just, let's get through some of them. Let me give you one of the biggest farming sims that came out this year. One of the biggest farming sim game releases this year was Story of Seasons, A Wonderful Life. Story of Seasons A Wonderful Life is a remake of the Harvest Moon Wonderful Life game that came out a year that I don't know off the top of my head, but years and years ago. And it's a farming sim game that has all the farming sim stuff, but this one pays a major focus on romance and finding a life partner within the first year, and then you actually get to grow old with your partner and watch your children grow up. Now I wanted to love this. This was my first Story of Seasons game. I wanted to love this so, so very bad, but I didn't. I have to say, for a game where the days go by very quick, I often found myself with absolutely nothing to do. I'm not gonna lie, this farming sim game did not have the stuff that I usually look for in a farming sim game. The romance mechanic I think is great, but I don't think there's nearly enough bachelor and bachelorette choices for a game that that's the major focus, as well as the farming just kind of didn't excite me that much. And overall, I couldn't get myself to play a whole heck of a lot of this game. I feel, I feel like I can't put it in D tier because there's like a significant amount of stuff in it compared to like some of these games I have in C tier. So I don't think I could put it under them. I think it's gonna go in C tier for me. Now, you know, we have to directly compare Story of Seasons Wonderful Life to the Harvest Moon game that came out this year, which was Harvest Moon, The Winds of Anthos. Now, this was my first ever Harvest Moon game, and this Harvest Moon game aimed to be the first ever true open world Harvest Moon. So yes, it's another farming game, but this one centers around the story of a volcanic eruption that happened and it totally split up the world, all of the villagers and all of the animals that lived in it. It's your job to not only do the farming sim stuff, you can romance people, of course, like usual, but in this one, it's your job mainly to reunite the different villages, explore the world and find some cute and exotic animals along the way. Now, this game took me by surprise because I had played the Story of Seasons game like before this one and I didn't love that one. So I did think this was gonna be a similar vibe, but I did find this one to be quite different. Even though this game lacked some of the things I really, really love in farming some games, like there's not a whole lot of decoration and customization in this one, it made up for that in the ability to explore the world. And my personal favorite part was tracking down all the different exotic animals. You got to use them as mounts and even bring them back to your ranch. It felt like there was a lot to do and explore all of the time where I almost got overwhelmed by all of the side quests from the characters. 
I have been really, really enjoying this game. I think this game for me is gonna be an A tier. Let's talk about The Ranch of Rivershine. Now, The Ranch of Rivershine is an early access game, so take that with a grain of salt as I rank the game but it is a game that focuses mostly about horses. There is a little bit of farming in it, but pretty much your character has just moved to this new place and it's your job to acquire and care for horses. You can even use them to compete in different competitions and get to know the locals. Now this game just felt empty to me. It definitely felt like an early access game. I can tell there are some good ideas in it, but there are these lifeless NPCs that like just stand around all creepy like. I feel like I didn't connect to any of the characters. I feel like I didn't know what I needed to do at any given time. And it just wasn't one that I ran back to. So I know it's an early access. I'm sure it will get much better. But for me, it's gonna be a D tier for now. Let's compare that to another game that's in early access. Different vibe for sure. Let's talk about Moonlight and Garland. Moonlight and Garland is a early access game that's a life sim set in a bustling city. And based off of which apartment building you choose to live in will kind of make your path forward in the game. There are lots of different styles with the really big luxury apartment to the rundown apartment that you have to build up. And you'll be able to do some gardening and customizing in your city apartment, as well as getting to know some NPCs and explore the town. Now, this game is also another early access game that did give me the vibe of, okay, we're in early access. And by that, I meant that I saw so many things that like weren't quite done yet. And it would be like coming soon, which for me, I completely understand when I purchase an early access game that it's not going to be complete. But this one, even though there were things that weren't in it, it didn't feel empty to me. It felt like there is going to just be more detail added and added and added. I like the story that there is so far. I like the characters. And this is one I think has a lot of potential. So this one for me is actually going to be a B tier game. I'm struggling for an order at this point. So let's just go with the first one that's listed. Let's talk about Above Snakes. Above Snakes is a survival game where you have to protect yourself and build up your colony, trying to avoid these kind of zombie-esque creatures. And you get to build your world tile by tile, getting natural resources, getting to know characters, and following a main storyline. I don't think I would continue to use the cozy game label for this one. While there are times that it is relaxing, like when you're picking out the tiles and you're getting your resources, I don't think the zombies are super intense and crazy, but overall, this one just wasn't my style of game. The storyline didn't really intrigue me that much. And the only thing I really wanted to do was walk around and get the resources. I kind of didn't find myself that invested in the story. I kind of just wanted to keep building and vibing. I'm gonna put it in C tier because there were things I liked about it. It's not really one that draws me back to it. The next game is a farming sim game that I feel like I didn't hear that many people talk about. And it's called Blue Oak Bridge. Now this one is another classic farming sim game where it's your job to of course take over and run a farm. But this one does have a little bit of a magical twist with witches and spells and magical creatures. I do remember enjoying this game when I played it, but I have not really gone back to it. I think that farming sim games are getting harder and harder for me to like stick with one of them because there are so many of them. I thought it was enjoyable, but it didn't stand out to me compared to some of the other ones I played this year. I do like the art style. I do think it's fun, but there just were some farming sims I liked a little bit better. So I'm gonna throw this one in B tier. Now let's talk about a game that was a total surprise for me. This game is called Cattails Wildwood Story. Now, initially I thought this one was a cat farming sim game. There is a little bit of farming in it, but really it's a cat life sim game. A life sim game that follows you as a cat with a colony of cats, and it's your job to keep out the bad demon cats, grow your village and recruit new cats, and it's actually wildly fun. The game is mostly centered around foraging, a little bit of combat, there's mining, and the cats are really fun. <laughs> you can romance the cats. I have not engaged in the cat romance, I have to say. 
but there's something really exciting about this game. The map is really, really huge. The forageable items are really fun. I enjoy the fishing mechanic in this one. It's a game that I thought was going to just be cute and silly, but it's one I find myself wanting to play quite a bit. So I'm going to put it in A tier. I liked it that much. Okay, I've decided I don't want to go in order anymore. So let's go for... Let's do the Fall of Porcupine. Fall of Porcupine is a narrative adventure game that follows your character, Finley, who is a little pigeon who has just started working at a hospital. It's your job to get to know the patients and the other workers at the hospital while uncovering the dark mysteries of the town and working your way up the medical ladder while trying to find workplace and outside of workplace regular life balance. I really liked this game. It has fun mini games, really interesting characters. I love the art style of this one. It definitely gets compared compared to Night in the Woods a lot, which is another cozy game I really love. I really enjoyed this one. I have to say I haven't finished it yet. It's one that I started and then a bunch of other games came out and I never quite went back to it, but it is one that I genuinely enjoy. I think I'm gonna, ooh, I don't know. I'm stuck between A and B. I think I'm gonna put it in A tier. I think I'm gonna put it in A tier. I do really like it and I do intend on finishing it. This is one I definitely wanna finish. Let's go for another narrative game here. This one is very different. This game is called Melon Journey Bittersweet Memories. This game takes a nostalgic Game Boy-esque style and it uses it to tell the story of a town where melons are illegal. Yes, you heard that right, melons bad. We don't want them. It's your job to explore this kooky little town full of kooky little characters and get to the bottom of what's really going on with these melons and look for your lost best friend who might be up to no good. This game is a shorter experience, but it is an impactful one. This game was so strange. The dialogue was so weird, but so funny. The gameplay mechanics, not that complicated. You're pretty much just going room to room to room to room until you find what you need to find and then the story keeps going. But I really enjoyed this one. I thought it was silly. I thought it was a good time and it really did keep me invested. So I am gonna put it in A tier as well. Now let's do Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara. Koa and the Five Pirates of Mara is a platforming game that pretty much draws inspiration from classic nostalgic platforming games from the 2000s, pretty much like the kind that I grew up with. It's your job to explore different islands, getting different items. You can do a little bit of customization, but mainly it's about the platforming. This one for me, I think was just okay. I like the style of it. It definitely does feel nostalgic. The platforming was good. It just didn't really draw me in that much. I am gonna put it in C tier. I don't think it was bad at all. I thought it was fun, but that's really all I have to say about it. Next, let's do Sugar Shack. Sugar Shack is a maple syrup simulator game where you, I don't know why still, you are in, I guess, the underworld with the devil and he makes you run a sugar shack. In the game, you get to farm for maple syrup and some other crops and use them to open your own maple syrup and other food item business. It's a little bit restaurant management, a little bit farming. It's a whole lot of weird though. And I have to say, I didn't really enjoy it. I ran into a lot of problems when playing this game. I felt confused. I felt frustrated. I thought the controls were strange. You have no inventory system, which I also think is weird. Didn't feel attached to the characters. The only thing I really liked was the concept of the farming for the maple syrup. I think this game just had the potential to be something really cool, but then it just kind of took a strange turn. Speaking of strange turns, let's talk about a game that was really weird, but I think it was weird in a good way. Minabo, A Walk Through Life. Minabo, A Walk Through Life is I don't even know what I would call it. It's like a management game where you are a little baby turnip and it's your job to walk through life. There are different missions you can follow in the game, which are my favorite, and they outline different things for you to do in your course of life. For example, the goal might be to live to 80 years old, or the goal might be to have three romance partners, or have two children, or have a pet. It's your job to manage your own needs, which are like physical touch, intimacy, and sense of belonging, as well as manage the other turnips around you. And through managing those things, you're able to live longer, or you can 
ignore all of that and you can cause chaos or bad interactions with people. Whenever I explain this game, I feel like I sound crazy. I feel like I've played this game on live stream a couple times and every time I play it, I'm like, okay guys, we could just do this one for a few minutes if you're not into it. But every time I play it, everybody is into it because it's so wildly fun and you don't expect it to be as fun as it is. I think it's chaotic and a little kooky, but I think it is kind of deep and meaningful at the same time. The music is really fun. The turnips are really cute. And I gotta say, it's like an S tier game for me. <laughs> I love this game so much. I've screamed playing this game. I've cried playing this game. I've laughed playing this game. It's a weird game, but I think it works. And it's one that I've really, really been enjoying this year. While we're talking about vegetable creatures, let's talk about Garden Buddies. Garden Buddies is a short, narrative focused cozy game where you have some different vegetables animals insects there's a frog some cute little garden-esque characters that all come to your new garden that you get to decorate and it pays a heavy focus on mental health and meditation and mindfulness practices now this game was really cute i love the animation style so much i genuinely felt more like i was watching a short film than playing a game most of the time just based off of how cute the animation was and how alive it felt but it really kind of stops there for me the game was only an hour long it's like 17 18 dollars in price there are mini games that you can replay but they're not ones that i think are anything life-changing or groundbreaking that i would want to replay them a bunch I think the story was sweet. I thought the decorating was cute, but everything was just a little bit too simple, to be honest, for me. So I'm going to give Garden Buddies a C. Let's continue the little garden and mushroom theme. Let's talk one of the biggest cozy games of the year, Mail Time. Mail Time is a platforming collectathon adventure game where you play as a male scout who needs to deliver mail to various creatures in the Grumblewood Grove, which is this lovely little forest full of cute little baby animals that need your help. This game is really fun. It is, it is another one that is a shorter experience, but the art style, the vibes, the aesthetic, I think totally make up for the fact that it is a little bit shorter. And this one I do think you can replay a couple times as well. I found the platforming to be a little bit challenging, which was perfect because you didn't speed through it too fast, but it wasn't challenging enough that it didn't feel like it went along with its very cozy cottage core aesthetic. I really enjoyed my time with Mail Time, so it is going to be an A tier game for me. Now, you know we have to directly compare it to the other big mushroom game that came out this year. Let's talk about Smooshy Come Home. Smooshy Come Home is yet another platforming adventure game that is mushroom centric. This one follows Smooshy, who has lost their way from home, and pretty much the whole game is you finding your way back home. Now, this game had everything I loved about Mail Time, but then more. The world of Smooshy Come Home was a lot bigger. There were more places to go, more things to do. I found this one to be a lot more challenging. This one had some like puzzles in it. The characters were fun. There were mini games in this one as well. I found this one to be the better of the two games, though I did really enjoy both of them. I'm torn between A and S, to be honest. I think it's similar enough to Mail Time that I don't think it's like a whole tier different. I think I'm gonna put it in A tier as well. While we're at it, let's talk about our other platforming collectathon game on the list. Let's go for Refresh. Now, Refresh is yet another platforming collectathon game. This time you're playing as a robot who is trying to rebuild the town that they live in after destruction happened. This one is very short. I think my gameplay of this one was only like two, two to three hours. So it was quite short, but this game is only a couple dollars on Steam. So I think it had a great price to content ratio. I thought it was really cute. It definitely had a lot less going on than Mail Time and Smooshy. So I think I am gonna put it in B tier, but I did really enjoy my time playing. All right, we got so many farming sims to still get through. Let's do another one. Let's do another huge and one of my personal highly anticipated cozy games. Let's talk about Everdream Valley. This cozy farming sim game, once again, is a, it's a cozy farming sim game where you farm and that's what you do. But this 
this one has a major focus on the animals rather than the farming itself. In this game, the major mechanic that kind of sets it apart compared to other games is that at night when you go to sleep, Sometimes you get to dream and become some of the different animals around the farm, and you get to do little mini games based off of the different animal. I wanted to love this game so much, but I didn't. I didn't. I found the dream mechanic took way too long to get to, and it wasn't that exciting. There are no NPCs in this game other than your grandparents and a random merchant. There's no town to go visit. You can't go inside your house. You are really just like out in the open. I found it to be frustrating. I found the controls to not be very intuitive. It wasn't, it wasn't my favorite. There are definitely good things in it. I don't think it was bad. Um, so I'm gonna put it in C tier because I feel similarly about this one than I do to Story of Seasons. And I, th I think it's better than some of these guys down in D tier but it wasn't what I was expecting and I definitely had some high hopes that were not met. Let's do another farming sim game. We'll do Sprout Valley. Sprout Valley is another farming sim. What? Guess what? You have to farm. This one is a very simple farming sim. You play as a little cat and you're pretty much like alone. You're kind of like on a farm in the middle of nowhere. It is very simple farming mechanics. It's pretty much, I would say like one of the better beginner farming sim games. It's simple, but it is really cute. You can decorate, you can expand things. Your inventory starts out pretty small in the beginning, which is a little frustrating, but I actually has grown on me when I first played it. I kind of wanted more. I definitely prefer the more intricate farming sims. I think you'll be able to see by the end of this list. Um, but I don't think this is a bad game at all. And I actually do think this is a really great option if you're just getting into farming or if you're looking for a farming sim that is not overwhelming, this is a good choice. I'm gonna give it B tier. I think, I think B tier is a good place for it. Next, let's do Wild Frost. Wild Frost is a deck building game where each time you win a different battle, you are progressing through this eternal winter and trying to save everybody. The cards that you're dealt are totally randomized. So the leaders that you start out with, you don't get to pick, which makes it challenging and exciting. And the cards feature a very cutesy design that I think is less intimidating if you're more into cozy games and you don't play many deck builders. Now this game was my first ever deck builder game. And I usually am not interested in these kind of games, but there was something about the aesthetics of this one that really drew me to it. I will say, before I played Moonstone Island, which we've already ranked, it's an S tier, I would have put this one higher because when I first played it, I really enjoyed it, but I was really bad at it. I just continued to lose and lose and lose and lose and lose and then lose some more. And I thought it was because I didn't understand how the card-based battling worked. It was something new to me and it's, you know, it's not easy. So I thought that it was me, but now that I've played quite a bit of Moonstone Island, which also is a similar mechanic. I think that Wild Frost is just like, the enemies that stack up against you, I think are just not equal most of the time you're playing. So I think if you do get lucky to win one or two matches, I find it quite difficult to go all the way. Um, and so because of that, it's taken me out of it quite a bit. I still like the premise. I still like the characters and the style of it. So I think I'm gonna give it, I think I'm gonna give it B tier when originally, I think had I not have played Boonstone Island, it probably would have been an A tier, but because of the sheer difficulty level, it's a B tier for me. Now I wanna do Sticky Business. Sticky Business is a game where you get to run your very own sticker shop. You get to design your own stickers as well as package them and respond to different customer letters requesting different items. And as you continue building your shop, you'll unlock the opportunity to purchase new components for your stickers as well as new packaging items and other goodies to put in your boxes. This game is really sweet. When I first saw this game, I knew it was going to be a major staple in the cozy gaming community. I think it is. I think it's a really sweet game mostly centered on customization. The, not that the customers like don't matter, but they, that doesn't really matter. The stakes aren't that heavy in this one. I would argue this game is more just simple, laid back, all about designing, but I think that it really works in this game. I didn't find myself like bored in this one when I usually find myself bored in games without 
very present stories. I think there are a lot of sticker options. They've done quite a bit of updates already for the game. I really like Sticky Business. I'm gonna give Sticky Business an A. I think, I think A tier is good for Sticky Business. The next game I wanna do, I think is Paparazzi. Paparazzi is a game where you need to take pictures of puppies doing different things. That's it. That's the game. Um, I wanted to love this game. It sounds like the perfect game for me. I love photo games. I love puppies. This one just, it, I don't know. It didn't, it didn't excite me that much. I feel like it broke its own rules a lot. Sometimes it would ask you to take a photo of something. Say for example, it wanted like a dog with a hat on and you would take a picture of a dog with a hat on, but it wouldn't register that you've taken a picture of a dog with a hat on. And then sometimes you'd accidentally take a picture of something random and it would think, oh yes, this counts as your dog with a hat. It, it didn't register the photos, which I think is the whole point of the game. It felt frustrating. Maybe I'm being hard on it because it's like a sweet and like no thank game. I didn't really like it. It's gonna be a D tier for me. Now let's compare it to the other puppy game I played this year, which is Little Friends Puppy Island. Little Friends Puppy Island is a game where you get to care for puppies on an island. You get to dress them up, accessorize them, take them on walks. There are cute little mini games. And most notably about this game is you're building a puppy resort and the different puppies that you find and acquire can work as different jobs in the resort. Now, I remember when I played this game, I was like so obsessed with it. This like fulfilled my needing to play Nintendogs on the Nintendo Switch void that I had. And I do really like this game. I do think it's very sweet. I think it is very cute. Um, there's not that many dogs in it though, which I think is kind of a bummer. That's like what it's about. As well as you can only have like three dogs in your backyard at a time which I also think is a bummer. I would have just loved to see them all running around and doing things, but I do think it is a very inventive game and it is one I enjoyed. I'm not quite sure if it's an A tier or a B tier for me. Okay, I, I think it's an A tier. I liked it. It was good. It was cute and it brought me a lot of joy. Next, let's go for Constellations. Constellations is a simple puzzle game about connecting constellations, except they don't really tell you what you're doing and they don't give you hints ever or ever any like written instructions. I found this one really difficult. I think I got a couple puzzles in and then fully didn't understand what I needed to do. And I didn't ever really play it again. Is that user error? Absolutely, maybe, absolutely and maybe, but it's my tier list and I couldn't get through it. So it's gonna be D tier for me. Stick with puzzles for a second and let's do Pile Up. Pile Up is a very industrial puzzle building and kind of management game where you're building structures upwards instead of all around. You have to build different structures to maintain your population size, but there are rules about which structures you can place on top of each other. So it's a bit puzzly and interesting. Um, it's also really fun and satisfying to place the different buildings on top of each other. I actually really enjoyed this game. This one was an early access when I played it. I know they're doing updates on it, but it actually felt like a pretty finished game. My only complaint about it was sometimes it was a bit confusing. After you placed something, a lot of the buildings look similar. So it was hard to tell quite what everything was at certain times, which made it a little bit less easy to continue building. But I had a wildly fun time playing this game. I I think I'm gonna give it a, I think I'm gonna give it B tier though. I think it's gonna be B tier for me. I think, I think it fits with this crowd. Let's do a similar kind of game while we're at it. Let's go for Terra Nil. Terra Nil is another building and resource management game. This one is mainly focused on the environment though. It follows you going into environments that have been damaged and abandoned, and it's your job to use a bunch of machinery to restore the land, get the animals back, then pack up your machines and go. I really wanted to love this game because I love the premise. I love the environmental focus on it. I love that it's teaching like, okay, we're coming in with all of our machines. We're gonna help fix it, but then we're taking our machines and we're leaving. We're giving this land back to the animals who were there and it's for them. I love that so much. I found the mechanic to be very confusing. I thought it was going to be more satisfying and creative, 
when in reality, it's kind of more of a strategic builder. Um, and I found that I've just made too many mistakes that would make me have to completely start my place over, which was frustrating. It wasn't my favorite. I think when I initially ranked this, I was too hard on it. I think I put it in D tier originally. That was too hard on it. I think I'm, I'm gonna give it a C tier because I think it does have a lot in it and I think it can be really fun. Um, I just kind of struggled with the mechanic and I realized the style just wasn't for me. Let's do Pico. Pico is another early access game, so take that as you will. And it's a game all about cats and tea. Pretty much you run a little tea house. You need to make tea. You get to decorate your tea house as well as you get to visit all the other cats in town who also have tea houses and they teach you different types of tea making mechanics and you could buy different items from them. This game is really cute. I think the premise is really nice. I like the tea making mechanic. I did have some bugs when I played it, which is to be expected because it's early access. But my main issue with this one was I felt like there wasn't a whole lot to do yet. I don't know if there'll be more, but there were a lot of times I was just kind of like, la 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 la, what do I do now? Just waiting for someone to want tea from me when I kind of wish there was always a little bit more going on. And I wish like there was something between B and C. Uh, I'm confused. Um, uh, Cause I like it. I like it better than all of these games. Well, I'm gonna give it a B. <laughs> I like I like it better than all the ones that are in C tier. So I, I think it maybe that means it belongs in B tier. Let's go for Pizza Possum, a game where you play as a possum who steals food and it's your job to not get caught by the cute little puppy police. It's chaotic. It's fun, bright and vivid. Um, I'm going to be honest, it's it's an S tier for me. <laughs> It's another game that's like a little weird. It's a little strange. This one's so fun. It's so fun to play. It's very no think energy, but you still need to think because you need to make sure you don't get caught. It's challenging enough while still maintaining its lighthearted feeling. Overall, I think it's a really fun game. The music is great. The characters are really great. The food looks delicious. And every time I play this one, I feel so much joy. So for me, that makes it an S tier. The next game I want to do is Ogu and the Secret Forest. This is another early access game. So keep that in mind as I'm reviewing it. But Ogu and the Secret Forest is an adventure game where you play as baby Ogu and you need to solve different puzzles, collect items, meet different characters, and pretty much explore the world for the first time as you're leaving home and growing up. Ogu and the Secret Forest is such a cute game. I really love the aesthetic of this one. I love the characters. I love the style. I think the storyline is fun. The only thing I didn't love about this one is I'm stupid and some of the puzzles were really tricky for me and there wasn't like a hint system or like a skip system. I'm stuck between A and B. It's a B for now. No, I don't know. Cause it's some of these, I think it's better than. See, I was gonna organize these in order, but I, I thought that would take too long. Um, it's like, is it as good as these guys though? I don't know. I liked it. I thought it was fun. I liked it. It's going in A tier, cause I liked it. Let's compare it to a game that's very similar. Let's talk about Frog Song. Frog Song is an another adventure game. This one you play as a little frog who is working on the like frog, defense can you tell i'm not reading the descriptions and i'm fully just coming up with them on the spot anyway you're a little frog who is trying to defend the frog village against other bad frogs and you're a tiny little frog everyone underestimates you the combat in the game is not super tricky there are puzzles in it it's cute and fun there are different villages to explore it gives me a lot of the same vibes that i get from ogu in the secret forest so i'm actually gonna just uh, it's gonna go right next to it I feel so similarly about these two games. They're different for sure, but I genuinely enjoyed both of them. I thought the story was really captivating and I think it's a really great game. Next, let's, I feel like we have to do one of the big games, right? Like you can tell I'm avoiding some of the big games, I feel like. Okay, let's do one of the big games. Well, this is a big game. Let's do Pikmin 4. 
Pikmin 4 is the fourth installment of the Pikmin franchise, which was my first ever Pikmin game, actually. And pretty much you have crash landed into this strange place and it's your job to locate your other crew members. And you do this with the help of the Pikmin, which are these garden-like alien little baby creatures, as well as your adorable dog, Ochi. And you use them to navigate different platforms and terrains, as well as fight off some cute little foes. This game was really fun. I was really surprised that I enjoyed this because I had grown up seeing Pikmin. I never played it myself. I didn't know if it would be my thing. It's really fun. It's really fun. The only thing I have to say critically about the game is I found it to be a little repetitive. Uh, they remind you what you're doing, I feel like, a little too often. That's really it. I didn't finish it yet, but it is one I really want to finish. I'm actually torn between putting it in A and putting it in S. It was really good. Like, the graphics looked really good. Did I like it that much? I haven't played it in a while. Maybe I should play it again. I like it that much. Okay, I liked it, but I don't know if I liked it in S tier amount. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna, it's my list. You can tell me I'm wrong. I think it's gonna go in A tier for me. Let's do another big one. Let's do, okay, let's do My Time at Sandrock. My Time at Sandrock is a life simulator, mostly crafting centric game that follows a post-apocalyptic desert, solar punky kind of world. You're the town's builder. It's your job to build things back up, get to know the characters, follow along different quests, as well as defeat some monsters. Now, this one is confusing and conflicting for me because this tier list is not a Nintendo Switch tier list. A lot of these games I played on PC, even if they came out for Nintendo Switch. The, this game I played on Nintendo Switch, and I think the performance was really bad on the, on the Switch. But I'm, not comparing, but I'm not comparing any other game on this list to their Nintendo Switch performance, which I think can make things change. So I have to look at this one knowing that it runs great on PC and taking those issues out of it. If I was judging how I felt playing it on Nintendo Switch, I gotta say it would be a D tier. I don't think that's fair though. I think I'm gonna give it C because I think even had I played on PC, which I intend to give it a go, I think I feel similarly about it than I feel to Story of Seasons. It, I think has more to do I just don't think it was my style. I wasn't like drawn to anything. I don't know if I'm really into the building aspect and component in this one. There are a lot of characters. It's fun to explore, but I had higher hopes for it that it just didn't really meet. Let's do Trey Racers. Trey Racers is a free to play racing game where you are racing in a, another solar punk desert kind of style game. And this one is pretty simple. It's just that you're racing on different trays through a desert. You can play with your friends. You can play by yourself. It's free to play. So I, I can't really critique it that much. It's cute. It's fun. It does have some things I wish you could change. I wish you could pick what course you're competing on. Um, and I wish the courses were a little bit different. I did. I think it was good though. I think it's going to be C though. I think I think it's right next to my time at Sandrock. They're both the desert and I think I think it was good. I think it was okay. So let's do No Place Like Home, which is a farming sim game that is also a post-apocalyptic solar punky world. This one, your character is about to move to Mars, but before your character moves to Mars, they pay their grandpa a visit one more time and they find out he's gone and his farm is totally trashed. So it's your job to clean up all the trash and set free all of the animals that have been trapped, fight off these little trash monsters. This one, I've been joking the whole year. It's more of like a cleaning simulator than a farming simulator, to be honest. The cleaning is satisfying for sure, but I wasn't invested in the story. I didn't really love the style. I did like freeing the animals and it was better than some of these other farming games that I have lower on the list. Like I definitely liked it more than I definitely liked it more than like Everdream Valley, but I'm gonna be honest, I think it's on the same plane as these guys, so we're gonna give it a C tier. We have a couple other farming sims that I didn't love that much, so let's like, let's, let's get through them. Okay, let's talk about Sunrise's Order, another farming sim game. This one, the premise is that 
You order everything from an online shopping site called Amazon, which is of course a play on Amazon. And that's how you get everything. There are no other NPCs. You're alone in the world. I, I didn't really like it. I, I didn't like the art style. I felt like it was really simple. I, I didn't really like it. I didn't really like it. I think it, I, I feel bad. I feel bad, I, but it's going in D tier. I didn't really like it. It was okay. It was okay, but I think the games in C tier have way more going on. So I think I think it's gonna be a D tier for me. Next one, let's do the Witch of Fern Island. This is another farming sim. This one is an early access, so take that with a grain of salt. This one's a farming sim, but you're a witch. You've crash landed on an island. You know the drill by now. And it's your job to build up the farm, but also learn magic. It's okay. I didn't find myself going back to it. I felt like it was very clunky. The characters felt kind of lifeless to me. I do like the magical aspect. You get to like craft and sell your own potions. That's fun. But um, I have mascara in my eye. I don't know. I, th I think it's with this party. I it's better. It's better than D tier. I think it's with this party. This this party, I think, is good for it. C tier for me. Let's go for Song of the Prairie. Song of the Prairie, you guessed it, farming sim. This one, you are a hero that has just returned from saving everybody in war. And now you're retiring and you're going to live a simple rural lifestyle. And you do that by becoming a farmer and you have these like oversized, larger than life pretty crops. You get to know the townsfolk. There's magic in the game. There are fun animals. This game, I have previously been very hard on because um, the translation I don't think is very strong in this game. I don't think that the sentences make a lot of sense. And I think that the characters are very unlikable. Um, and also there's a weird gender lock on the game where at the beginning you have to choose between male and female. And if you're female, you're the gardener. If you're male, you're the fisher person. You can't buy the outfits from the other person. I think if I'm recalling correctly, that means if you're a girl, you can't wear pants. <laughs> and I wanted to wear the cute little pantsuit. So I was really hard on it for that. But when I think about it, when I think about it, guys, when I think about it and I compare it to, to a lot of these ones, well, well, it's it's better than a lot of them. It's it's better than a lot of them for me. I think the one that kind of throws me is like, I don't know. Actually, I think it it was a little bit more enjoyable than Story of Seasons for me, but I didn't really like it that much. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm. Um, <laughs> no. I don't know. Um, no, okay. It's staying in C tier. It's okay, so I like it more than a lot of the games in C tier, but it's it's C tier for me. I don't like it that much. Okay, next, let's do Cornucopia. Cornucopia, you guessed it. It's another farming sim game. This one though is a 2.5D art style game, which is a really cool and innovative. And this one, the story starts with you being saved from like a frozen block of ice. And it is farming sim, but there's like a billion NPCs. There's so many of them. There's combat in it. And there is really interesting mechanics that I haven't seen in any other farming sim. I like this one. I haven't played this one that much. Admittedly, I have not played this one enough and it definitely deserves some more time. Um, but it's really good. It's it's actually really good and it feels like there's a lot of detail in the game. I'm torn between I'm torn between A and B. I'm torn. I need like eight more categories. Um because I think it's better than I think it's better than some of these games in B, but I don't know if I love it quite as much as some of the ones in A. Well, A, actually I do I think it's actually really good I'm gonna put it in a and it's one that I need to play more of for sure next let's do something that's not farming <laughs> let's do finding Hannah 
which is a puzzle game that takes on a Where's Waldo style puzzle where you need to locate different items and objects. And this one, along with the puzzle, tells a narrative story of three generations of women and their various struggles in their own time period and how they grew up and how they relate to each other. I love this game so much. I think this game is so good. This one, it's not done. It's in early access. The whole story isn't completed, but it's great. I really love the Where's Waldo style puzzles. I would have thought they would have gotten repetitive, but they really didn't as well as there are these merge style puzzles that you get to do in between the other puzzles. And I think those are even more fun than the main puzzle. I love this game. Um, I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can quite put it in S tier, but it's definitely an A tier. Another puzzle game that I enjoyed a lot too was The Shape of Things. This puzzle game takes on the Rubik's Cube style and puts that to solving for different objects. So you have all of these broken apart objects and it's your job to twist and turn them to get them to go back together so you could find the original shape of things. And you do it in a really calming atmosphere with satisfying music and visuals. This game I thought was gonna be really simple too, but it was really, really good and really fun. It's a nice one to just pick up and put down, but it's hard enough that you aren't just gonna breeze through it. I enjoy this one a lot. It's gonna go right next to Finding Hannah in A tier. Next, let's do Dolphin Spirit. Dolphin Spirit is an adventure game where you go and visit your grandpa for the summer who lives on a beautiful tropical island, which unfortunately has been covered in trash. So it's your job to go around, help the NPCs, clean up the trash, and get to free some of the wildlife that's trapped in the ocean. It's a simple game. It's a little bit shorter, but the narrative is cute. I found it to be really relaxing and enjoyable. I think just because it's a bit shorter, I'm not gonna give it an A tier, but it is definitely a B tier. I think it is an enjoyable experience. I found it to be really satisfying and fun. I really liked getting to free the ocean animals. I thought that was sweet. Now let's do a game I heard next to nobody talk about this year, and it was called Viewfinder. Viewfinder is a first person puzzle alternate strange reality game where you go around and you have to uncover different mysteries that are left behind. You get to go around with a camera as your guide and you get to like step inside the photos, step inside paintings. It's a little bit strange to describe, to be honest. It's a trip that you need to take for yourself. It's a really fun game. It's not super, super long, but I found the puzzles to be very intricate and challenging enough without being too frustrating. I usually don't like first person games, but this one felt very satisfying to me and I really enjoyed it. So it's an A tier. Next, let's do A Tiny Sticker Tail. A Tiny Sticker Tail, you play as Flynn the donkey who has a magical sticker book. Using your magical sticker book, you'll have to solve some different puzzles and unlock a narrative that tells us a bit more about Flynn and his past. It's a pretty simple game, but I think it's a very innovative mechanic. It was a bit shorter than I expected as well. I guess it's a common theme today, but it was really interesting and I did really like the style of it. I'm torn between B and A. I think it's an A. I think it fits with how I feel about a lot of these games. Next, let's do Dordonia. Dordonia is a stunning watercolor narrative game that follows the story of Mimi as she reconnects from memories of her past of stories with her grandma. This game I thought was really sweet. I love the visual style. It's one of my favorite visual styles in a game for sure. Um, I didn't find myself like running to finish this one though, to be honest. I feel like oh, I'm torn. It was good. It was good though. I enjoyed it. I thought it had a lot going on in it. I'm stuck between B and A because I kind of feel a little similarly than I feel if I compare it to the fall of Porcupine. Yeah, I, I, I think I feel pretty similarly to it. I did think it is an interesting story that I probably should finish. Next, let's do Panorama. Panorama is a strategic building game where you have to use different tiles to 
build things. In this one, you're kind of building structures and you need to connect the tiles in a certain way that'll gain you more points so you can unlock more tiles so you don't run out of tiles. This one is very similar to a game called Dorf Romantic that came out last year. I like this one better. I think the structures are better and more pretty. Um, I think I'm gonna put it in A tier as well. I feel like I have too much in A tier. I feel like there's too much in A tier now. I feel like some of these should be B tier. Let me go with it. And then if I change my mind at the end, we'll change our mind at the end. Okay, next, let's do Mineko's Night Market. Mineko's Night Market follows the story of Mineko who moves to an island where all of the locals tell about a superstitious sun cat. Mineko goes on a journey to find out more about the sun cat herself while also engaging in the weekly night market where you can craft different items and sell them and also purchase items from other people. It's a narrative game that has a lot of crafting and getting to know the different characters while also including some mini games as well. Mineko is another game I haven't played a whole lot of to be honest and it was a game I was really really excited about. I feel like this game is making me think I need to restructure this whole list. Um, Cause I liked this game and I think this game, I, I don't know, <laughs> I like this game, but I do think it's really repetitive and I didn't like it as much as I thought I was going to like it. But I think that it's, I think I like it more than some of the B tier, but I don't know if I quite like it as much as some of these A tiers. Uh, I don't know. I think it's gonna be a B. Yeah, yeah, I don't, yes, yes, yes. Leave it, Peyton, leave it. It's B tier. It's good. I just found it a little bit repetitive. I wanted a little bit more. Okay, I'm sweating. Let's, let's move on. Let's do Lakeburg Legacies. Lakeburg Legacies was one of my most anticipated cozy games of the year. It is a cozy matchmaking management building game. It's chaotic and pretty much you are making different matches in order to try to make your kingdom thrive. But people can cheat on each other, people can die, people can have kids. Craziness ensues. I don't love it as much as I thought I was gonna love it. I would have thought at the beginning of the year it was gonna be an S tier game for me. I do really like it. I do think it is really unique and innovative, but I do think it is a little bit over complex at times. So because of that, it's gonna be an A and not an S for me, but strong, strong game. I enjoyed it a whole heck of a lot. We're gonna compare that directly to Fabledom, which is a similar kind of game. Fabledom is an early access game though, so keep in mind. It is a building management game that also takes place in a fairy tale esque world. This one's definitely more about the building, I think, uh, rather than the manage. Well, it has a lot to do with management as well, but this one is better suited if you'd like to customize a little bit more. Um, I just didn't feel as attached to this one comparing it to Lakeburg Legacies. Like I didn't really feel attached. Like the characters aren't really characters. They're kind of just there. So I think because of that, I do like Lakeburg more, but I do like Fabledom. I like Fabledom. I don't know. <laughs> do I? Okay, it's a B. Fabledom's a B. It's B tier, great, love that. Next, let's do Hello Good Boy. Hello Good Boy is a narrative adventure game where you play as a little boy and his dog who find themselves in the afterlife. It's your job to go through these different magical realms that are based off of each season and help other NPCs. And as you help them and figure out their stories, you start to have memories of your own life and help you figure out why you made it to the afterlife in the first place. It's a shorter game. It's really good though. It's, I think it's really good. I love the message behind it. I love the style behind it. It's gonna be an A tier for me. I wish it was longer. I wish there was more, but what is there I think is great. Okay. Um, Oh my God, I left such a collection of games. Okay, let's do Rakuin. Rakuin is a narrative game that follows a little boy who is sick in the hospital. He finds out through his favorite storybook that there is a magical world called Rakuin and he can go there and ask for one wish. So he sets out on a journey to go to Rakuin to make his wish, 
but he finds that all of the magical creatures in the world of Raccoon are actually fantastical representations of the other residents that live on his floor in the hospital. It's your job to help everybody out, uncover secrets, and engage in mini games and puzzles to watch this beautiful and heartbreaking narrative unfold. This game... This game is one of the best games I've ever played. I haven't finished it. I'm almost finished with it. It is heartbreaking in the right way. It is so beautiful. I've clapped, I've cried, I've laughed. The characters are so intriguing, so full of life and so interesting. The storyline is great. The world is beautiful. I can't say enough good things about this game. I think it's a really great one. Let's do Lottle Knot. Lottle Knot is a game where you play as a little ocean explorer who needs to clean up trash from the completely damaged ocean. You're in like an outer space type ocean though because there are axolotl-like alien creatures that are there that you need to save and take care of. And you clean up the trash with like a very satisfying ray gun. And pretty much the gameplay loop is just you going through the different places, cleaning up the trash, collecting the trash for resources, using recycling, as well as getting to save the axolotls and watch them grow up. You could play with them and name them. It's a simple game, but it was one of my favorites. I really enjoy it. I think it's gonna be an A tier for me. I don't know if it's quite an S tier, but I really do enjoy it. And I think the style is very pleasing. Let's do one of my favorite farming sims of the year. Let's talk about Sunhaven. Sunhaven is, you guessed it, a farming sim game, but this one is a magical farming sim game where you get to pick what kind of magical creature you want to be. My character was an angel, but there are tons of different options. Pretty much, you go to this town called Sunhaven. There is this dark magic looming. It's your job to work alongside these magical dragons to stop the darkness from coming in. And you get to do this while managing your very intricate and complex farm, getting to know a wide amount of very attractive looking NPCs, and traveling to worlds outside of Sunhaven where you actually get to have your own house and farm there as well. This game is one of the best farming sim games I've ever played. I will say this game is incredibly complex and at times I feel like it's a little overwhelming, but it has me playing it nonstop. I love the vibe. I love the aesthetic. I love the characters, the storyline, the mechanics. You know, you already know Sunhaven is an S tier for me. And I want to see more people play it because I really think it is just such, such a great game. Next, let's go for Palea. Palea is a free to play MMO, which means massively multiplayer online game, which has to do with farming, but also hunting, fishing, all of that good stuff. It centers around you, who is a human, and you are in this world where humans have not existed in a really long time. So it's your job to get to the bottom of why the heck are you here while getting to know the other NPCs, romancing them, becoming friends with them. There's a lot of decoration in this game as well. Palea, I really enjoy. It is a really great game. It's not quite an S tier for me just because I find it to be a little like, re like fetch questy repetitive for me where I feel like I just have to go back and forth and back and forth all the time. So because of that, I'm going to put it in A tier. I do really enjoy it, but there were a couple other farming-esque games that I, in I did enjoy a little bit more. Let's do Bayonetta Origins, Cereza, and The Lost Demon. Now, this game is the origin story for the Bayonetta games, which you don't need to play to have played this one. I've never played them, was never interested in them. Pretty much this game follows the story of a young witch, Cereza, who runs away from her witch studies to go to this enchanted forest in hopes of searching for her lost mother. She accidentally summons a demon that takes possession of her favorite stuffed cat, Cheshire. And from there, you and Cheshire have to battle different fairies, solve puzzles, and navigate through a stunning, dark, enchanted forest in hopes of finding your lost mother. Now, this game, I did not think I was gonna like. The only reason I played it was because of the art style. I thought the art style was so beautiful. I was there for it just because of that. I didn't think I'd like this because there is a lot of combat in this game, but I really loved this game. 
The combat is really interesting because you're controlling both Cereza and Cheshire at the same time, which makes it feel more strategic than just like slashing away mindlessly, which isn't my favorite thing. I found the puzzles to be really interesting. I loved the voice acting. I loved the story. I haven't quite finished this game yet because I never finish any games apparently. I loved this game though. It really opened my mind to what other kinds of games I might like that are potentially different from most of the other games on the list. But for me, big S tier. Let's do Storyteller. Storyteller is a puzzle game where you use different comic strips in order to solve for a puzzle. Basically, you get the theme up at the top and using different characters and settings, you need to try to match what the theme of the puzzle is. It's really fun, chaotic. I think that the puzzles are intricate. They're not too difficult. They've added in new puzzles. Um, I think it's a fun game to play along with other people and it's one that I've definitely really enjoyed. So I'm gonna also put it in A tier. I liked a lot of games this year. Let's do Planet of Lana. Planet of Lana is a cinematic sci-fi cozy game, which we can debate how cozy it is, quite frankly, where everybody in the world but you has been taken by aliens, and it's your job to follow along this side-scrolling puzzle and navigate different platforms while also solving intricate puzzles. You have the assistance of a cat-like creature while getting to pretty much watch like a movie unfold before your eyes, it is that cinematic. This game, I love. I think this game is a, a, like a piece of art, quite frankly. This game was talked about a lot in the indie game community, but not what I heard so many people talk about in the cozy game community. It definitely still gives me cozy enough vibes. I think when I originally ranked this game, I ranked it as an A tier. I was wrong. This is an S tier game. It's it's really great. And I think that it is absolutely worth playing. Let's go for Roots of Pacha. Roots of Pacha is a farming sim game, but this farming sim game takes on a prehistoric twist. And rather than making currency in the game, the currency is building up your community and getting to know the other characters. There are fun animals. The, the farming is quite intricate. This is a really great farming game. I will say I've played this one less than some of the others on the list. I really have been enjoying Roots of Pacha. I don't think I enjoy it quite as much as the ones in S tier. I think just aesthetically, there's something about the prehistoric nature of it that I don't always quite vibe with as much as I vibe with ones like Sunhaven and Moonstone Island, but Roots of Pacha is a really great farming sim, so it's an A tier. For me. Next, let's do Paleo Pines. Paleo Pines is another farming sim game, but this one's all about dinosaurs. In this farming sim game, you pretty much are just, you're looking for dinosaurs. It's your job to find this super rare dinosaur species and the different dinosaurs do different things on your farm. They're NPCs to meet. There is a world to explore. I really like Paleo Pines. I wanted to like it more, to be honest. I think the dinosaurs are the best part of the game. I would almost argue that I would rather call this a dinosaur care simulator than a farming game sometimes, just because the farming's not super, super complex. I have really enjoyed playing this one, but it does feel like it is missing out on some things, like some more NPCs. I wish there was the ability to decorate a little bit more. So because of that, I do really like Paleo Pines, but I think it's gonna be a B tier for me. Next, let's do... Let's do Dave the Diver. <laughs> Dave the Diver, not a cozy game. Dave the Diver is a game where you are part ocean exploration person who needs to catch fish part sushi restaurant operator. So in the game in the morning, it's your job to go and dive deep, catch all of these different types of fish. And at night you need to do some restaurant sushi management and serve customers the sushi of their choice, all while following a narrative with really interesting and kooky characters and taking on some quite difficult challenges. Now I say this one's not a cozy game because you have to harpoon a shark. Very, that's not a spoiler. It happens like like quick in the game. Um, I, I was a little jarred by that experience, but this game is wildly fun. <laughs> this game is wildly fun. I don't know if it's an S tier for me because 
sometimes it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but I have really enjoyed it. It's definitely unique. So it's an A tier for me. And oh my goodness, we're almost to the end, everybody. So let's get through this. Next, let's do While the Iron's Hot. Now, While the Iron's Hot is the most recent game I've played. So I've definitely played this one less than all of the others. But While the Iron's Hot is a simulation game where instead of a farmer, you're the blacksmith. So the game centers around you exploring the world and doing different blacksmith tasks, crafting new items, upgrading your tools. I do really like what I've played so far. And I think it's really interesting to be playing as a blacksmith rather than a farmer. Um, I'm not quite sure if I wanna do A or B. Give it a B for now, just because I haven't gotten super, super far in the game. But so far, I am really enjoying it, and I do think it is really different and unique. Let's do. Let's do Cor. I mean, let's do Coral Island. Coral Island is a farming sim game that follows your character who has moved to an island that has been taken over by a tragic oil spill. It's your job to build up the farm, but also clean the ocean to find the magical merfolk kingdom, getting to romance of very hot villagers and also experiencing other types of magic around the island as well. It is very complex in the amount of farming that you can do, the mining you could do, the fishing you could do, the diving in the ocean. I mean, like, you guys, you know, like, you already know, you already know. This is one of my favorite games of the year. I actually will tell you which game is my ultimate favorite of the year at the end, but this is one of my favorite games of the year. I love everything about this game. I love the characters. They all have super intense backstories. You see so many cutscenes with them. It's a great time. Love it. 12 out of 10 right, would recommend. Um, and I'm excited to see what other updates they add to it because they've already put so much into the game and I really enjoy it. Next, let's do, let's do Stray Gods, the role-playing musical. Stray Gods, the role-playing musical is a visual novel musical game where you get to make your own choices surrounding the narrative of a girl named Grace who is accidentally framed for the murder of a Greek muse called Calliope. You have been accused of murder, and now that you've taken over Calliope's musical abilities, it's your job to get to the bottom of who really killed the muse, and also get to learn more about the Greek gods and goddesses in this really kind of edgy and almost like punk musical way. This game is crazy! It's so good! Um, I have to say... Yeah, this game is so good! I, I was gonna say it's an A tier. No, it's... I think for me, it's an S tier. I will say I've been playing it again recently because I didn't finish it. And I'm, I am starting to get like different songs than I got the first time. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I do think there are some songs that are way better than some others. But just looking at what the game is, like it's so good, so. It's an S tier for me and I did really enjoy it. Okay, yeah, let's do the Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood. The Cosmic Wheel Sisterhood is a narrative adventure that follows the story of Fortuna, a witch that has been exiled from her coven. And so she uses dark magic to summon a behemoth to help her escape the situation she's in. The game majorly focuses on making different cards that are inspired by tarot cards. And based off of the different cards you make, you read different characters' futures that dramatically alter the direction of the game. This game, not that we're like ranking them in total order. I'm gonna be honest, this is, um, this is my second favorite game of the year. We haven't, gotten to our first favorite game of the year. This is my second favorite game of the year. Uh, it's so good. I clapped. I, fi I finished the game and I clapped. It was that good. I loved getting to make the cards. It was a dark story for sure, um, but it was one that I thought was so beautiful. S tier, S tier. Moving on, let's do video verse. Videoverse is another narrative game. It is a visual novel. This one has a nostalgic feel. 
that is perfect if you love the early days of the internet and early gaming. The whole game takes place pretty much through like an online chat forum where characters talk about their favorite video game series. And through exploring the different chat rooms and private messages with characters, the storyline comes alive and the whole story centers around the potential shutdown of this forum and new technology on the rise. This game is so cool. I, at first, wasn't sure how I felt about it because it's a different way of telling a story than I've ever seen done before, but I think it's done very, very well. Um, I'm debating between S and A. I think I'm gonna give video verse an A, but I really, really liked it. I, re I think it's a really great story and I think it is a really interesting way to tell a narrative. Next, let's do Fay Farm. Fay Farm is a farming simulator game all about fairies. This one is all about a magical world of Azoria. It's your job to build up your farm, explore the mines, and bring magic back to this place and get your fairy wings. You can also romance the characters and do a bit of decorating. Fay Farm is really great. I think Fay Farm is a good time. I've really enjoyed playing it so far, but I do think there are things missing from it. I don't really love the romance mechanic so much. I feel like the game is quite expensive. Um, the story you can get through pretty quick. I haven't gotten through it quick, but I know that other people have gotten through it rather quickly. I still really like it though. I don't like it quite as much as I like uh, the ones in S tier. So I'm gonna put Fay Farm in A tier, but it is a really solid choice for a farming sim game, I think. Now, I think we gotta talk about the watermelon game, AKA Suica game. This is one of the most polarizing new cozy games. It is a simple game where it's like a merge style puzzle where you're using different fruits to combine to make bigger fruits and based off of the bigger fruits you get and merge, you get more points. It sounds very simple, but it is wildly entertaining and I've probably put the most hours into this game compared to many of the others. So for that reason alone, it's gotta be an S tier for me. This game I think is a perfect example of, you can do a game that is simple, but do it very well and people will like it and people will play it. And I have really enjoyed this game and I've sunk a lot of time and energy into it. Now, I wanna review the two games that are left. One of them is my favorite game of the year and the other is my least favorite game of the year. So my least favorite game of the year is Freaky Trip. Freaky Trip is an absurdist puzzle game. That's freaky. You are a little creature who has been separated from your chicken and you're trying to find him. This game, first of all, the performance on the Switch was like unplayable. It continued to break all the time. The duration of the game is like an hour long and it's quite expensive for being an hour long. The puzzles make no sense. There is no dialogue to tell you what to do. And I didn't find there was a lot of logic in the puzzles. So I feel like the game is just mindlessly clicking on things as well as I had the problem of I would click on something and then it wouldn't register. So sometimes I would click on th something and I'm like, okay, that's not the right answer, I guess. And then I'd click on it later and then it worked. So it, it just, it was a frustrating experience. I was excited about it because I really liked the art style. The execution wasn't for me. And that means my favorite game of the year. It was tough b between Cosmic Wheel and this one, but thinking about it, this one definitely was my number, number one. Coffee Talk 2 hibiscus and butterfly coffee talk and specifically coffee talk 2 is a talking simulation game and visual novel where you're a barista at a late night coffee shop and it's your job to make different drinks for fantastical creatures who come in and tell you their problems and based off of the different drinks you make them depends on how their storyline goes each character actually has a couple different ways their story can go. So your drinks are very important and you can see a lot of different endings just based off of the choices that you make. You also can engage in some latte art, which is really fun. I played both Coffee Talk 1 and 2 this year. I actually played them back to back, but Coffee Talk 1 is not a new game. So we're just looking at Coffee Talk 2 for this. 
The second episode of Coffee Talk I thought was amazing. They added new characters, they added in new components, and some really exciting new ingredients that definitely, I wouldn't say make it better than the first game, but make it just as good as how great the first game was with its lovable characters. They bring back all the characters from the first game, then add some new ones. The stories are touching and detailed. The characters are interesting. There's never a moment where someone comes in and I'm like, ugh, I don't want to see that character. I loved every minute of this game. I laughed, I cried, I clapped when it was over, and I want to play it again to see all of the different endings. Coffee Doc is my game of the year. And there you have it. This is my tier list. I'm making no changes. That's it. <laughs> That's my tier list. Going from D tier to S tier, 75 new cozy games. There you have it. And there you guys have it. Did you make it? Did you make it to the end? Oh my goodness. That was so many games, but I hope you enjoyed my agonizing process of ranking them. This was so hard to do. I genuinely enjoyed so, so many of the games I played this year. So thank you for spending this year playing cozy games with me. I cannot wait to start a whole nother year full of cozy games, but I want to know your thoughts down below. Was I wrong? Was I right? What are your favorite cozy games of 2023 and your least favorite games? I'm nosy and I want to know. So let me know down below. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.